The next three videos are about empirical distributions. There aren't going to be any worked examples here, and there'll hardly even be any maths or code. What it's really about is transforming our perspective. In many academic fields, there's a point where you step up the level of abstraction. In maths, for example, there's a step from doing algebra with numbers to doing algebra with functions, Fourier analysis and all that stuff. In data science and machine learning, the big conceptual step is rethinking the relationship between data sets and random variables. We've been working with the two all along, get a data set, pick a random variable distribution, fit it using maximum likelihood, and so on. What I want to persuade you of over the next three videos is that that's childish thinking. I want to persuade you that a data set is a probability distribution. There won't be much payoff for a while, I'm afraid. All this stuff about data sets and random variables, we're going to leave it to one side, go back to inference, and then join the two strands together. Okay, enough of the waffle. Here's a definition. Given a data set of numbers, we can define the empirical cumulative distribution function, or ECDF. This is the function f hat of x, where x is a number, and it returns a value in the range 0 to 1. This is how it's defined. f hat of x counts what fraction of the data set is less than or equal to x. Let's work out how to plot it. Here are axes, x on the horizontal axis, and I want to plot f hat of x on the vertical axis. Here's a point to start. At x equal to the minimum value in the data set, what is f hat of x? Well, the data set only has one item less than or equal to the smallest item, namely the smallest item itself. Let's assume for the time being that there are no duplicates. Once we've gone through all this, it'll be easy to see what to do with duplicates. Okay, so f hat of x must be equal to 1 on n for this x, because there's only one relevant data point. How about when x equals the second smallest value in the data set? Same as before, now there are two points that are less than or equal to x, and so on, and so on, for the third smallest. Next, let's think about the value of f hat of x in between these points. For any x smaller than the minimum value, f hat of x is equal to zero because there are no points. For any x in between the smallest and the second smallest, the number of data points that this definition scoops up doesn't change, it's still just one data point, so f hat of x is flat between these two values. And we can fill in the rest of the f hat function like this, it's a step function. It's almost embarrassingly simple to plot. Just sort the x values, pick evenly spaced values on the y-axis going from 1 on n up, and plot it. MATLAB has an option saying plot it as steps. Now, back to the problem of duplicates. Let's look at an example. Here's a data set with duplicates. Let's go through the same process and plot f hat at interesting points. The nifty thing here though is, it doesn't matter if I choose to follow the recipe from the last slide and just plot an extra point at point eight comma one on three. When I draw the step function, it all comes out the same. So this code snippet is all you'll ever need for plotting an ECDF, whether or not your data set has duplicates. So why the interest in the ECDF and why is it even called that? It's because it's a mirror of the cumulative distribution function for a random variable. Let me explain with an illustration. Here's a histogram showing galaxy speeds from an astronomy paper. This dataset became one of the canonical go-to datasets in statistics for showcasing ideas about clustering, and that's why it's here, not because we're going to do, say anything useful about astronomy. The idea is, if you imagine the universe is uniform and expanding, then when you look at the sky, you should see a continuum of how fast galaxies are moving away from us, the nearer ones moving slower, the further ones moving faster. But what matters is that the spread should be smooth, as this black line indicates. But when you plot a histogram of actual observed galaxy speeds, which are measured using redshift, the histogram has clusters, 
which suggests that galaxies lie in clusters, which means that the universe has structure at the galactic level. Anyway, the point is, the theoretical distribution doesn't match the histogram of observed data. Now let's look at this again, but with the empirical CDF. First, what does the empirical CDF look like? It's an increasing function, going from 0 to 1, of course. It has steep bits where there are many data points, and flat bits where there are few data points. The neat thing about the empirical CDF is that you don't need to bin the data. The, the bottom plot shows every single data point, whereas the top plot, the histogram, only shows an aggregate, and you always need to worry about whether you've, you're distorting it by the way you've chosen your bin sizes. Anyway, here's the PDF of the, th the theoretical distribution we'd expect in the top plot. And here's its CDF in the bottom plot. Both of them show us that it's a bad fit. Now, here's another fitted distribution. This is a Gaussian mixture random variable. The random variable's PDF looks like it fits much better, and its CDF tracks the empirical CDF of the dataset very closely. This is what a good fit looks like. The natural question to us now is whether this is the best fit we can achieve. If we really wanted to get a perfect fit for the data set, what distribution should we choose? That's what we'll look at in the next video.